to People's Church San Diego. We're so glad you've tuned in and you're worshiping with us here on this beautiful day God has given us. Would you join me in a word of prayer as we get our time started? Let's pray. Lord, today, we know that as we gather from our homes across the city, our homes across our county and across the nation, and even some tune in on the other side of our country and in 
different places around the world. We know that you are here with us. We know that you come. You promised in your word, God, that when people gather together in your name, you are there in the midst and that you inhabit, you live in the praises of your people. And we thank you, God. And our desire is to do exactly that, Lord. It's to worship you, to adore you, to love on you, and to pour our praises upon you because you're not just worthy, God, but we so love you. We so love you and we so long for you to do something awesome in all of our lives today. Once again, Lord, we open our hearts to you. We open our spirits to you. We open our lives, our minds to you for you to come and to continue to work in us, transforming us, shaping and molding us in who you want us to be. Thank you again that you brought us and we thank you for family and friends sitting around us as we worship together. In Jesus' name, amen.
promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your Never fail me yet, no.
Good morning again, everyone. Welcome to this very hot season in San Diego. We'd like to welcome you as we continue to on our series, Overcoming Our Greatest Fears in Life. Now, whether it is in the playground at recess, at school growing up, asking a date to the prom, asking for a hand in marriage, or maybe it is on the job, or maybe it's from your spouse or a child, wherever it comes from, we can all agree that rejection hurts. It damages and it crushes us inside. It is an emotion that we can all agree we would like to do without. We don't want to experience rejection. We want to avoid it at all costs. And thus, we fear rejection. Now, the fear of rejection is a powerful fear that often has a long-term and future impact in our lives. Many people experience this fear when placing themselves in situations that could lead to, to rejection, like a applying for a job or a promotion or a job interview, sweaty palms, labored breathing, and an, an increased heart rate and trouble speaking are all common symptoms of the fear of rejection. Applying to get into a new school or a program, you get so nervous opening that letter, or maybe it's something like asking someone on a date or going on a date, you are so worked up to work, worrying whether that person is going to like you or not, so you put on a mask and end up being weird, right? Remember those times? Trying out for something, a sport, a program. Now, all the situation of putting oneself out there can cause the fear of rejection. Now, to some people, the fear of rejection has become very crippling and very paralyzing. This fear has many underlying causes. Most, if not all, our fears of rejection stems out of our childhood, and we carry it all our lives. Now, the, truth, the, the reality is there's no medication or over-the-counter drug for it. There's no quick fix or overnight formula to get rid of it or deal with it. And the sad part also, reality is, it is not a subject that we talk about anywhere. No, we don't talk about it at home, not in school, unless you're taking psychology or in a child development course, not even in church. Now, the truth is this, unrecognized and untreated fear of rejection may worsen over time, leading to greater limitation in a person's life. It can cause a person to miss out on many of life's greatest experience and moments. Now we ask, how did we develop the fear of rejection? How do we develop the fear of rejection? Simple, from experience, because we've all been rejected. Have you already learned and figured out that not everybody in life likes you? Some of those hurts that you've had from people rejecting you, you've never really gotten over it. You've never really forgot it. Now, you can get the fear of rejection from all directions, from marriage, from your family, from your parents at school, at work, from former friends, from disappointments, from friends, from criticism, even from a look. Now, many of us are not probably aware of how this fear affects our lives. Now, notice in Proverbs 29, 25, it said there, the fear of men will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. It says there, the fear of men is a snare. It is a trap. It can entrap you. I have seen young boys and girls who would do anything to the point of self-destruction just not to get rejected. Here's some of the few, here's some of, just a few of the effects of the fear of rejection in our life. It causes us, it causes one to be fake. We create two faces, two or three kinds of life. We become like what they call a chameleon, right? We carefully develop a scripted kind of life. We play with the different kinds of crowds we connect with. We're so afraid to show our true self, so we wear a mask. 
Also, it allows others to manipulate us. And advertising does this all the time. Buy this product and you look cool, right? It causes us to conform to peer pressure. Several years ago, you heard the news of a beautiful freshman girl from UC Santa Barbara who spent her first spring break in Mexico only to drop dead in the midst of a crowd of friends who were cheering and pressing her to keep her mouth on a hose attached to a tank of beer. She died literally of poison with alcohol. Now, for those of you who knows what the word initiation means, you know it can be deadly. We conform to pressure because of the fear of rejection. There was a king in Israel who said this. The first king, he said, I sinned. I was so afraid of the people, so I gave in to them. Ever felt that way? You end up sinning because you gave in to the, the pressure of people around you? Here's another result of fear of rejection. It keeps us from speaking the truth. Now, what, think about this. Why do people lie? Why do people shade the truth? Because they're afraid if they tell the truth, they would not be accepted. Today, nothing could be farther than the truth. Speaking the truth today can cause you to be canceled. Speaking the truth today can cause you to be labeled. Here's another, another result of the fear of, of rejection. It prevents us from giving and receiving love. Past hurts prevents future relationship. You've been rejected before, so you're so scared to get connected again. You're so scared to connect, to receive love, and even give love because you felt rejection at one point. It causes shyness and loneliness. If you're afraid of rejection, you end up building a wall around your life rather than building bridges. You don't want to you, you don't want to get close to anybody. You're afraid of building relationship because of the fear of being rejected. Rejected. It produces depression and unhappiness. Friends, think about this. Living for the approval of other people is the miserable is the most miserable way to live a life. Here's another one I I think we can all agree and we all have to admit it silences our sharing about Christ. You won't identify yourself as a follower of Jesus Christ for fear of rejection. Here's an example in 1 John 12, 43 and 44. It says there, many believe in Jesus, but they would not admit it for fear of the Pharisees. They were more concerned to have the approval of men than the approval of God. Friends, the fear of rejection affects every area of our life. Let's face it, facing rejection is not easy. And the truth is that we know what it means. We know what it means. The truth is we, we all know what, what he means there, right? No one likes to be rejected because it hurts. Now, how do rejection, how do you overcome the fear of rejection? How should we overcome the fear of rejection in our life? You must get a new perspective in these three areas of your life. Your, your perspective about God, about yourself, and about other people. Can I say this, parents? You need to teach this to your children, to your kids, so that they can overcome peer pressure. The first perspective that needs to change in our life is this. We need to put God first, in first place in our life. We need to put God in the first place. Psalms 27, 1, here's what David said. The Lord is my life and my salvation. I will fear no one. Now, God is described in two ways, the way David described it, as light <clears throat> and as salvation. In your outline, take note of that. If, you're, have a, if, you, if you have a pen, circle that. What does light do? It does three things. It illuminates, it protects, and it energizes. It illuminates. Light illuminates. I see things more clearly because light, light helps you see things that you that is kind of blurry, right? In the dark. We've all learned this in our first session that many of the fears that we have in life are basically are basically because of lies or misconception or simply the fact that we have been misinformed. 
David said it like this, when I'm confused and afraid, God lights my way. Light also protects us. It provides security. Some of you have those lights, spotlights in your backyard that once the movement happens, the light flips on. See, light is a source of security. Light also energizes. Ever try to turn on the lights in your house when you're gloomy? It lifts your mood, it brightens your day, right? David is saying here, my relationship to God has the same three effects. He illuminates my life, and because he illuminates my life, I can see what is real and what is not real, what is truth and what is a lie. And because of that, I feel safe and protected, and the truth and the feeling of confidence because I know I am safe, because I know I am safe, and because I know I have the truth, it energizes my life. Therefore, I am not to be afraid of anybody. Let me ask you this. Do you have that kind of relationship with God? Can I say this? If you don't, you're probably susceptible to the fear of rejection. Maybe you're looking to somebody else to be your illumination, to make things clear to you. You're looking to somebody to be your protection, to give you security, or you're looking to somebody else to energize your life and lift your mood, brighten your day and provide you happiness. Now think about this, the only problem with that kind of thing is that if other people are your like, you're going to be in trouble. You say, why, Pastor Phoebe? Because other people cannot go on and on and on. People burn out, people wear out, they die out. You cannot make somebody else the light of your life. People are just too unreliable. Now David knew that no matter what happened, God would always love him. You fear, your fear of rejection is based and rooted in two things. One is the idea that we all need to be loved and, 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 ex, and be accepted. We all desperately need massive doses of love in life in order to be a healthy individual. Now that is a deep, profound need that you have and that we all have, right? Now because of that, we fear rejection. And we have this false idea that we think that other people ought to be able to fully meet our need in our lives. Now get this, folks. When you expect somebody else to meet all your needs for love, you're asking for trouble. You are setting yourself up for hurt. You're setting yourself up for the fear of rejection. When you look to any other person, your, your spouse, your children, besides God to meet all your needs, you will be very disappointed. Why? because they cannot meet all your needs. Our needs changes, their need changes. Human love and resources are limited. There is no human being alive that can meet all your needs. I'm sorry, there just isn't and there will never be. Friends, the reality is this, only God can meet human needs, all of our needs. God has the love and the resources no human can match, right? Just think of the word unconditional love, boundless love, that no matter how deep your need is, God can feel it. So the first step in overcoming the fear of rejection is you've got to put God in first place. David says, God is my light and he is my salvation. David was fearing rejection here in Psalms 119, 39 and 42. He said this, save me from the insults of fear. God, I want to obey your command. Show me how much you love me, Lord. Then I can answer those who insult me. He said, Lord, I need to be saved from the insults that I fear. I need to be saved from what other people think about me. Or I need to be saved from what I think other people think about myself. I'm worried about what other people think. David is saying, God, I want to obey your command, but I feel the pressures of my fear. And I know what you said in your word, and God, I want to obey it. But the fear of rejection from my peers is pulling me. And then notice the next part of the verse. He said, so God, show me how much you love me. 
Here's the point, friends. To David, it was knowing how much God loves him that helps him deal with his fear of rejection. David was asking God, God, show me how much you love me. Now take note of that. For us today, God has already showed us how much he loves you and me. David needed a proof, an affirmation of God's love for him in those times. But today, we already know how much God loves us. He sent his only son to die on the cross. So today, in order for us to be reminded of God's love, all we have to do is look at the cross. Friends, when we understand how much God loves us, enough to die for us and give his best for us, then I need to be more concerned of getting his approval than anybody else. I love what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, when he said this, for yourself, concentrate on winning God's approval. Did you know when you live with that kind of principle, that basically simplifies life? You cannot please everybody, folks. Even God couldn't please everybody. Overcoming the fear of rejection begins by putting God in first place. To overcome rejection, another area we need a new perspective in is this. It is the way we see people. I must put people in their place. Now, that doesn't mean to disrespect them and drop and kick them off to another country, right? I'm, I'm talking about putting their opinion, putting people's ideas and action in the right place, having the right perspective, not overvaluing and believing everything that people say about you, understanding, friends, that people around you were imperfect just like you, and they are broken and hurting just like you, and they will dislike you. They'll say things that hurt you. Notice. But God said in Isaiah 51, 12, the Lord says this, Isaiah, I am the one who strengthens you. Why then should you fear mortal man who is no more enduring than the grass? God is telling Isaiah, why are you so scared of this man's, uh, man's ideas about what man thinks about you? They're just like grass. They're going to be gone one of these days. What he's saying there is everybody is temporary. People's opinion and belief changes, friends. And that's one reason why we have updated editions and revisions in most of our textbook in school. Textbook that, textbooks have editions through the years. Some textbooks written by intellectuals and experts 30 years ago are now obsolete and no longer being used. Why? Because people's belief, their stance about matters, opinions, ideas, and worldviews are always changing. And yes, friends, even though they are experts and professionals and specialists, remember this. I think we need to be reminded these people are not gods. And their opinions are, going to, are not going to last. Opinions and ideas, ideologies are constantly changing through the years. Can I say this? Do not allow yourself to be defined by what other people say about you because we are all different. We, are, we like and approve different things. There will be people who will like me and accept me, accept my thoughts, my worldview, my opinions, my ideas, and my style. But the flip reality to that is there will be people, there are people who will not like and accept me and everything about me. And I need not only to know that, but I need to accept that. Friends, that's putting people in their place. Do not assume that people's judgment are straight from God. If somebody comes up and criticizes you and disagrees with you, don't have, don't have to, you don't have to automatically accept it. You ought to judge it for what it's worth. Now I'd like to say this. When in doubt of yourself, go back to God. Go back to the first and say, God, would you show me what this really is? Why am I saying this, friends? We live in a cancel culture society today. 
if I choose to disagree with you, you can cancel me by unfriending me on social media, withdrawing your support, or, or boycotting my product if ever I own a company. So you know what? I'll just keep quiet and not say anything because I'm scared. Listen to me, folks. When people's approval becomes all important to you, you are setting yourself up for a lot of disappointment, a lot of pain, and you are setting yourself up to be afraid, and that is a trap. If you live that way, you are at the mercy of everybody else's judgment. People would tell me, I've lost myself, Pastor. I don't even know who I am anymore. Listen to what Paul said in Galatians 1.10. He said this, Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. Paul says that his goal in life is to please God, not men. That's a choice that you and I are going to have to make. He says, I have made a choice. I can choose whether I'm going to live for the applause of God or the applause of men. Let me ask you this. Who are you more interested in pleasing, the crowd or God? Is it the crop or is it God or culture? He's saying you cannot seek the approval of both at the same time. You've got to decide who am I trying to impress for the rest of my life. Now I believe in some areas of our lives we can all fall in this trap of seeking the approval of men. Children go through it, teenagers are great victims of this, young adults, and so are adults, even senior adults. We value so strongly the opinion of others and their approval that we miss many great things that God wants to do in our lives. <clears throat> We miss the opportunities God opens to us. We stifle the gifts and talents that God has given us because we fear of how we are going to be rated and graded by people. We miss out on living to our full potential because we're always seeking man's approval, right? We want to be liked. We want to see that thumbs up. I think the Bible is a better alternative. It says there, who are you trying to please, God or man? I would, I would suggest that the way to overcome the fear of rejection is to live your life for an audience of one. Say this in your heart, God, I'm tired of following everybody. I'm tired of telling everybody how, and listening to everybody how I should live. I'm not going, God, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to please anybody. God, I want to do this for you. That's what it means to overcome the fear of rejection. Notice what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, verse 31. He said this, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, friends, if you recognize how much God is for you, one of the things that really has inspired me is this. God doesn't only love me, He is for me, right? Some people say, oh, I, like, I love you, I like you, I believe in you, but I am not for you. It says that God is for us. It gives you that ability to withstand tremendous rejection. Can you ever, I, I think we asked the question, can you ever come to the place in your life where you are not affected by the opinion of others? Can you? Can you ever come to that point? Let me be honest with you. My honest answer is no. I don't think so. I don't think you and I can ever come to the point in our life where we're not affected by others' opinion. But I do know and I do think you and I can come to the point in our life where we are not directed by others' opinion in our life. You will always be affected because you're human. We ache and we hurt, we have emotion, but you do not have to be directed. Sometimes people will say the meanest things to you and it hurts, but it doesn't direct you. The lie is that 
I've got to be approved by others, other people, in order to feel good about myself. Friends, that is just not true. The truth is, I don't need the approval of others to be happy. If you can grasp this truth, if God is for me, who can be against me? It doesn't matter. You will be released to new levels of de developing your God-given potential. Friends, put God in first place and put people in their place. I like the prayer of Lloyd Ogilby, a widely respected longtime pastor, speaker, author, and former chaplain of the U.S. Senate. He said this, he prayed this, secure in God's love. I will not surrender my self-worth to the opinion and judgment of others. When I am rejected, I will not retaliate. When I am hurt, I will not allow, I will allow God to heal me. And knowing the pain of rejection, I will seek to love those who suffer from its anguish. Wow. I like the first part of the prayer. Secure in God's love, I will not surrender my self-worth to the opinions and judgment of others. The third perspective that needs to change if we want to overcome the fear of rejection is to put myself in the proper place. You don't realize how unique and valuable you are. I think we never really think how valuable we are. None of us do. And the reason you and I are so vulnerable to the fear of rejection is because we are so full of self-doubt. And that's why when criticized by another person, deep down inside us, we have the doubt and the fear that they're right. And so it hurts even more. It cuts us deep. Somewhat, somebody ignores you at the party and you say, whoa, they don't, they don't like me. They ignored me. No. Maybe they, don't, maybe they simply did not see you that you were there. Some people talking look at you with a blank stare and didn't say anything to you. And immediately you assume you're, they're talking about you. No. <clears throat> they're just processing the heartbreaking news that one of them just shared. Now, because you were seeing through the eyes of fear, you become very vulnerable. When we look at life through the eyes of fear, we do not see other people's pain. We only see our fear. We miss the opportunity to minister to others. We come up with conclusions. We feel like they don't like me. We can only see ourselves and what victims we are. Friends, what is the antidote to all this? The antidote is to accept what God says about you. Now, what does God say about me? Notice what Psalms 8, 5 says in your outline. It says, you, God, <clears throat> made men inferior only to yourself. You crown him with glory and honor. Friends, hear that. I was created by God. You were created by God. And God does not make mistakes. God doesn't make junk. And God doesn't make defects or rejects. Not only was I created by God, notice this next verse. Christ has made me acceptable to God. Ephesians 1.4, Paul wrote, through what Christ did for us, he decided, now get this, <clears throat> He decided to make us holy in his eyes without a single fault. We stand before God covered with his love. Now, get a load of that. Without a single fault, he made us holy in God's eyes, right? That is a great verse. We are acceptable to God, not because of what we've done, because we could never go, we're never good enough to be acceptable to a perfect God. But through what Jesus Christ has done, He died on the cross, paid for our sin, co covered us with His love. God looks down at us today and said, you are spotless, you are acceptable, and you are holy. And all I have to do today is believe and accept what God has already done for me through Jesus Christ. Did you know that one of the most amazing truths is that God knows every single thing about me 
and still loves me? God knows every single thing about you that nobody knows, that you're ashamed of letting people know. Maybe things that you don't want people to know because they're afraid, you're afraid they're going to reject you, reject you. But God knows every single thing about you, every thought you've had. <clears throat> and here's the amazing part. He still loves you. Next time you sing Amazing Grace, think about that. That is how amazing it is. I was created by God. Christ made me acceptable. And if God says, I am okay, I am okay. If God has, great, God has created you and Christ has made you acceptable to God and God says, you're okay, you are spotless. Can I say this? I need to make a choice. Whose opinion and whose value system am I going to receive? My peers? or what God say about me. 2 Corinthians 10, 18, here's what Paul said. It is not self-condemnation that matters. It is winning the approval of God. <clears throat> he says it doesn't matter what I say about myself. It doesn't matter what other people say about me. What really counts is what God says about me. Yes, I am not perfect. But God had already accepted me. And if God says, I'm okay, if God says you're okay, we are okay. No matter who rejects you, God never will. Psalms 27.10, every time I read this, I'm thinking, wow, God, thank you. I've never felt rejection from my parents. But I'd like to say this. I know some of you have. Notice what David said in Psalms 27.10. He said this, Even if my mother and father forsake me or reject me, the Lord will receive me. Think about that for a while. Even those who brought me in this world, even if they reject me, the Lord won't. Some of you <clears throat> have gotten your first dose of rejection from the people who brought you out in this world. And let me just say this, I am deeply sorry. Let me say this, if your parents rejected you growing up, it wasn't your problem, it was their problem. It could be possible, maybe because they were rejected too, and they were just turning it on somebody else. Now, the point is this, you cannot do anything to change that now, and yes, that had greatly affected your life, even as an adult. And that's the main reason why you need to change your mind and you need to change your focus from the one who rejected you to the one who ex accepted you in spite of everything he knows about you. Friends, that is your Heavenly Father. I encourage you to make a choice today to live for an audience of one, the one who unconditionally accepted and love you and will continue to love you no matter what. It is the only safe relationship you will ever have in this lifetime. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, across the world today, <clears throat> across all this crowd that is watching today, so many people have been rejected. So many people have felt the sting and the brokenness of rejection. And now, God, they are stricken with the fear of rejection. If you have been rejected and are living with the fear of rejection and you're afraid and you're tired of it, Maybe you, you, you've suffered this and, and you cannot move it in your life. You cannot build any relationship. You're afraid to try new things. You're afraid to, you have built such a thick wall around yourself. If you have been rejected and you're living with fear of rejection and you're tired of it, can I say this? Why don't you consider accepting what God offers you? His unconditional love, acceptance and acceptance by believing and accepting what Jesus Christ has already done for you. Pray this prayer quietly in your heart. Say this as honest as you can. God, I am sick and tired of living with the fear of rejection, always doubting myself, always seeking the approval of others. 
putting a mask, mask so that I'll be accepted. Being pressured to do things that I don't like, things that are against my conviction. Always seeking men's approval. Allowing myself to be manipulated by others. God, I want to live the rest of my life being who you created me to be. I want to live for an audience of one. So this morning, God, I open my life to you. I ask you to come into my life, renew my mind, transform my heart, and change my life. Help me to know and understand your grace and how much you love me. God, forgive me. I am sorry for all the wrongdoings that I've done, all my sins, my doubts, and my, and my, 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 my bad thoughts, God, my bad actions, my wrong motivations. But God, today I'm tired of that. I want to live for an audience of one. Help me, God, to understand your grace and your love. Many of you, most of you, have already done that. Some of you are already Christians, and you've been followers of Jesus Christ for many, many years. Let me ask you a very poignant question. How are you doing when it comes to your identity in Christ? Are you, are you confident in telling others who you really are? Or are you a secret follower of Christ? I want to ask you, who around you knows that you are a follower of Jesus Christ? Does your friend know that you're a follower of Jesus Christ? Does your family know? Do you feel comfortable talking about your God stories? Who around you needs to hear your God stories? Who could, who could you invite to the next session, to the next event in the church that you go? Let me ask you this. Is your fear of rejection keeping your friend from hearing the greatest news in the world? The bottom line is this. Are you living for an audience of one? Or have you got sucked in by the fear of rejection? Can I encourage you this morning? Hey, it's time to change. Take that step and the leap of faith to say, God, I've been a secret follower of you for all these years because I was afraid to identify myself as your follower. Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you that we do not need to beg for your love. We don't need to earn your love because we could never earn it or deserve it. But you are a gracious God. And your grace is truly amazing. You have just given it to us. And so this morning, God, we commit ourselves to you. My prayer, God, for all of us is help us to never be entrapped by the fear of rejection. Help us to accept ourselves for who you created us to be and help us to live with confidence. God, bless your people this whole week. Protect them, empower them, and most of all, Lord, let them live beyond, outside their walls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much again for joining us this Sunday. I cannot wait to see you next Sunday. I'd also like to say this, hey, I'd like to encourage us to continue to be safe, not to live in fear, but to live in faith, but be wise enough to be cautious and be safe in everywhere you go. I'd like to see you next Sunday. May God bless you. I love you all.
As we come to a close, we are so thankful that you join us this morning. You know, at the end of every session, we this is a special time where we can come together and pray for one another. So if you are there at home and you have family around you, or you're worshiping with people, maybe friends that you invited, would you join hands if you don't mind? Would you join hands and would you take this time right now to pray for the people standing and worshiping with you right now. Let's do that, shall we? Lord, we thank you for speaking to our hearts loud and clear. Lord, we know that it is your desire in our broken, hurting world, fragmented, Divided, It is your desire that we, your children, we, your followers, we, your disciples, would be the agents of positive change, that you would use us, that we allow you to use us to be the catalyst so that your love, your mercy, your compassion would reach the hurting, broken, dying world today. And Lord... As we face this week, we know that you are going to be with us. Help us to do exactly what you've asked us to do today. And Lord, we ask that you continue to protect us, continue to watch over us. Help us to be a blessing to our loved ones, to people around us. And Lord, we pray for those that are looking for jobs. We pray that you would open opportunities. God, even in our economy, even in what's going on, you are the source of everything, God. So we pray for those looking for jobs, that you would open doors for them to find employment. And once again, we thank you for our church family. We pray that as we go throughout this day, be with us, God. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
thank you so much for worshiping with us. And we want to let you know we're excited to see you next week. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.